Come. Good afternoon. Come. Please sit down. Mr. Anirudh, you are already in service in the Indian uh, Information Information Service. When did you join? You have not detail So, I am of the 2021 batch. So, my training started in December of 2022, sir. Last year. Okay. Right. So, now since you have already qualified here, is this your, uh, how many, year? was it your first attempt last year when you got into the... So, that was my second attempt. So, this is your third attempt. So, this is my fourth attempt, sir. Your fourth attempt. Okay. I see. Is your uh, aim the IAS or the IPS or the Foreign Service? Uh, sir, my service preference is the IAS followed by the IPS and then the, then the Foreign Service. Okay, right. You are a civil servant now. Uh, what protection constitution is given to a civil servant and where do we find that? Uh, so, in the article 311, so we see that there are two protections that are given. So, the first being that a civil servant cannot be relieved of their duty by an authority that is lesser uh, than the authority that posted them and so the second is that they will have a right to be heard and so that is subject to certain restrictions but in most of the cases they will have a right to be heard with regard to any complaint for the removal from service. So can uh, somebody be uh, removed or dismissed from the service without hearing? So I believe that in exceptional circumstances, uh, so this is the case but in more often than not, sir, they will have a right to be heard, sir. Does any case come to your mind where somebody is forced to removed in a minute? Uh, sir, no particular example comes to mind, but I believe that in cases involving national security or if the individual is part of any terrorist organization or has been colluding with some foreign um, country, then perhaps in those cases. Sir. What do you understand by the word due process of law? What comes to your mind when we say he is following due process of law? Uh, so, the idea of due process of law uh, in the Indian constitution is given in the fundamental rights. So, Article 21 if I am not wrong, sir. And so, it means that any and all decisions taken by the law, uh, by any executive body must follow the due process of law. Meaning thereby what? So, it means that uh, the process as laid, laid down in any legislation or any set of rules must be followed um, in terms of any decision making, etc. So, how is the due process is different from the procedure established by law? Is there, are these two different things or one and same? You say yes, sir. Uh, sir, I believe there is a very fine distinction, uh, sir, in the sense that due process of law was taken from the uh, US constitution by procedure established by law, I believe was from either the British or the Japanese constitution. Sir, I am not aware of the exact difference, sir. Is there a UK constitution? Is there? Uh, sir, by constitution, sir, I mean the... Um, what is the constitution of UK called? So, I believe it's the Magna Carta, so it's not a... Uh, Magna Carta is charter, 1215. So, they don't have a written constitution, sir. Okay, what do they refer to? Generally, they say it. In the, in the Privy Council or in the court you have. Sir. What do they refer to? Uh, sir, I'm not aware of what they refer to. You have heard the term common law? Sir, I have, sir. It's a common law which has evolved over the period of time. So, now we do have a, this collegium system or this basic structure. But in the constitution, it is not mentioned anywhere. It is not mentioned. It is not mentioned. So, how it is interpreted? What authority gives this power to Supreme Court to invent something which is contrary to expressly written there? Uh, so, the Supreme Court under its powers of Article 142 has uh, given the doctrine of the basic structure in the second and the, uh, sir, in the Keshavnan Bharti case. Subsequently, sir, with regard to the collegium system, so in the second and the third judges case, they said that uh, the words are that the executive that the president will appoint the supreme court judges and this will be done in consultation uh, with the uh, chief justice of the supreme court mm -hmm. so this consultation was uh, in the second and third judges case construed to be absolute concurrence uh, and so this was the birth of the collegium system so what was the case when bharti case walk me through that case sir. what is this one case regarding and how many judges were there why it is so celebrated case in Sir, uh, the Keshavnan Bharti case was, I believe, in 1973, sir. And, sir, it laid down the basic structure doctrine. And, sir, I believe that it was uh, relating to some religious affairs in Kerala, sir. I'm not aware of the exact case law and its details. How large was the bench? Sir, I believe it was a, either a 9 or a 13 member bench. 13 member bench. Was it a unanimous or majority decision? Sir, I think it was 7 to 6 majority. 7 to 6. That means one judge who tilted basic structure which can rule. But if the Supreme Court itself changes the basic structure of the constitution, where do you go? Absolutely, sir. I believe this is one of the um, biggest lacuna that exists 
in our constitutional structure, structure today. As so, there is no absolute definition of the basic structure. It has not been codified anywhere. And so, the powers of uh, implementing the basic structure are only with the uh, Supreme Court. And sir, so in the future, they might even be used arbitrarily, sir. Arbitrarily. So, uh, if the parliament passes unanimously a law that the Supreme Court judge should be appointed, I could apply this one. Then, uh, what kind of a situation you see for this country? Particularly, what is happening around in the... Indeed, sir. I mean, the example from Israel is right in front of us. Additionally, sir, a similar attempt was made uh, by the 99th Constitutional Amendment Act of 2016, where the NJAC was to be made. However, sir, citing the basic structure in the independence of the judiciary, the Supreme Court uh, struck down the said uh, constitutional amendments. Okay, slightly shifts you are from there. What is the problem with Turkey and Syria? What is the conflict between Turkey and Syria? So the primary uh, conflict in Tur between Turkey and Syria relates to the Kurdish population that is in the northern uh, northwestern regions of Syria. And so the present uh, conflict that has been going on in Syria has seen Turkey arm and fund a lot of the fighting that has been going on in uh, Syria, sir. What is a very unique situation there, that two superpowers are supporting the opposing powers? Indeed, sir. So we saw that uh, in the case of Syria, there were a lot of international players, such as Turkey, such as Russia, such as Iran, and such as Saudi Arabia, uh, being stakeholders in the conflict in Syria, sir. So is the Ukraine conflict, Russia-Ukraine conflict, is a finishing for the NAM? Sir, it certainly seems like it is an end of what we say the non-aligned movement. And sir, this is uh, especially underlined by the fact that powers such as Sweden and Norway that have that had pledged a non-alliance after World War II and sir, even as recently as after the Cold War have now decided to join the uh, NATO. And additionally, sir, we see that in this particular crisis, there are very few global powers that have not taken an explicit side, sir. So, for instance, we see that China has more or less explicitly supported the cause of Russia. We see that most of the European nations, we see that USA has explicitly taken the side of Ukraine and gone beyond that by aiding them with uh, money and arms. Thank you. You play squash. How uh, Have we ever won a gold in squash, gold medal? No, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, actually the hobby of squash I picked up in my fourth year of college. Ma'am, because uh, I realized that to play sports like such as football and cricket, you need to gather about 10-15 people and over here you just need one person. So ma'am, I play uh, occasionally and I play only for as a hobby ma'am and I have not participated anywhere. Okay, but has India won a gold? Uh, no ma'am, India has not won a gold in squash ma'am. Saurav Goshal, the team didn't win in Kuala Lumpur 2022? Ma'am, I believe that uh, ma'am, I'm not aware of uh, the... Who is the best player in India? Ma'am, currently it is Saurav Goshal and he's ranked 21, ma'am, in the world. And the world's best? Ma'am, it keeps changing, but I think currently it's Mohammed El Shorbagi, ma'am. Of? Of Egypt. Ma'am, very recently he changed his nationality to British, but he's originally from uh, Brit uh, Egypt. Okay, ma you have written prevention and causes of aging. Yes, ma'am. You're worried about this at this young age. What do you mean by this prevention? Oh, you study what is the yes, ma'am cause of aging and how to prevent. Yes, ma'am. You ma arrived at some conclusion which you can share. Indeed, ma'am. Ma'am, I believe that the field of uh, research on aging has moved tremendously in the past decade. And ma'am, the findings that they have made are uh, fantastic, which is what initially attracted me towards the field and studying about it. Ma'am, most recently, we have uh, scientists have conclusively found out the root cause of aging at the cellular level. And ma'am, having found this, they have found ways to uh, circumvent this process and ensure that uh, the very paradigm of aging as we see it is no longer the same. And ma'am, this uh, research is so credible that WHO has now classified aging as a disease and no longer something that is inevitable or something that has to happen as a part of life, ma'am. Now, in anthropology, why is uh, Louis Leakey so famous? Who was he? Ma'am, Louis Leakey was um, an archaeological anthropologist. And ma'am, he is primarily known for all of the research he's done in Africa with regard to his fossil findings that have paved today's theory of how humans evolved. Uh, ma'am, I believe that the fossil that he... Ma'am, he's found two credible fossils. One was in South Africa. Uh, ma'am, I don't remember the name of the fossil. And another was in Kenya, ma'am. Homo habilis? 
होमो हैबिलिस है नहीं है वॉट वॉज दैट सिग्निफिकेंट अबाउट दैट डिस्कवरी मैम होमो हैबिलिस इज द फर्स्ट इंस्टेंस वेर वी सी द इमरजेंस ऑफ परफेक्ट बाई पेडलिज्म इन द होमो स्पीशीज मैम अडिशनली मैम होमो हैबिलिस इज सीन एज एन अर्ली एनसेस्टर ऑफ होमो इरेक्टिस एंड इट इज ऑल्सो सीन दैट होमो हैबिलिस एंड होमो इरेक्टिस वो पर हैप्स टूगेदर एट सम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम बट इज द मोस्ट सिग्निफिकेंट फाइंडिंग is the fact that it is the first instance where we saw almost perfect bipedalism what do you understand by neely kranti or blue revolution i believe blue revolution refers to the idea of uh, increasing the production of fish and aquaculture ma'am and ma'am uh, this has two sub components one relates to inland fishing that is within the country and the other is uh, in the oceans ma'am so what is india doing about uh, it's increasing its aquifer because it is leading in uh, fish exports right indeed ma'am it has taken some steps what were, can you think of some of the steps ma'am the first one that comes to mind is the pradhan mantri matsya sampad yojana where the government has uh, ensured that there will be large parks for ensuring that the post processing of lot of these fish that have been captured secondly ma'am a lot of the indian fishermen are localized in nature and they do not have access to um, large vessels for carrying out mass fishing ensuring that there is protection given to uh, these fishermen by not allowing a lot of the global bodies to uh, make large corporations that can uh, put these small fishermen out of jobs is something that has been done and the third is mission fingerling wherein ma'am the seeds for inland fisheries have been given Uh, to a lot of the inland uh, fishermen in states such as Haryana and states such as UP, and ma'am, these are the three that I'm aware of. Recently, the NATO expanded, right? Ma'am, is it one of the largest alliances in the world? Ma'am, I believe that with 31 or 32 members, it is not perhaps the largest, but currently it holds a lot of significance. Okay, tell me uh, which country joined recently, and what is its impact for the world and for India? Ma'am, the most uh, recent addition to NATO was Finland, ma'am. And ma'am, the relevance of this addition is the fact that Finland shares a 1,300-kilometer border with Russia. And ma'am, we see that the threat of Ukraine, which is also a country that borders Russia, was enough to precipitate a crisis that has gone on for more than a year. And Russia has already said that they plan to mobilize more troops across the Finnish border. And ma'am, this is a challenge that will be certainly. Uh, something to be reckoned with for the rest of the world ma'am particularly for india ma'am i believe that this uh, ma'am by making this crisis of russia and ukraine more serious it increases the onus on india to perhaps either take a side or to emerge as a leader to find a mediation or um, solve the issue ma'am just recently the new uh, space policy 2023 was announced ma'am do you know some of its significant features and the role of ISRO and some public PSUs uh, ma'am the most recent space policy outlined the duties and roles of ISRO NSIL that is new space india limited and ma'am there is a third PSU the name of which i do not remember in space ma'am it's called in space and ma'am they uh, one of the key focal points of the policy is the fact that they wish to focus on increasing the private parties and their participation in space ma'am and very recently we saw uh, the gslv mark 3 take 36 satellites that were to provide uh, internet for uh, the world and ma'am this was part of the satellites were made by indian companies additionally we also see that the policy focuses on hand holding a lot of the startups by uh, in space and ma'am nsil is there to ensure that any large satellites or any uh, large projects can be done ma'am and it will largely take over the role of the antriksh corporation that was earlier there and you know what do you understand by uh, track to diplomacy uh, ma'am my understanding of track to diplomacy is that uh, it is not something that is formal the diplomats of a particular country are not involved in this however primarily uh, the lead thinkers or individuals um, who run public policy think tanks etc participate in track to dialogues and uh, does it uh, replace the formal uh, track one what is its role Uh, ma'am i believe that the role of track to diplomacy is to buttress the ideas that are to be supported by track one diplomacy usually ma'am my understanding is that it is there for initial for initiating a certain 
uh, thought in the global sphere, in the geopolitical sphere, ma'am, where experts introduce an idea that is uh, that allows rumination for the rest of the world, and ma'am, then there is uh, once everyone has discussed it, then actionable advances can be made by the track one diplomats, ma'am. Can you recall any country with which India uh, has used track two diplomacy, neighbor? Ma'am, I believe that with Afghanistan, uh, ma'am, during the Afghan crisis, ma'am, when the uh, meetings were being held, diplomats from India did not go because India's uh, stance was that they were not willing to negotiate with Taliban at the point. So what they had called Track 1.5 diplomacy, that retired uh, diplomats had gone. Ma'am, that is something that I can recall. There's also been with Pakistan, no? Okay, ma'am. Track 2. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. As if somebody said, that uh, India never lost independence as long as it had a strong naval forces till 16th century. Who was it and uh, do you agree? Elaborate it. Uh, sir, I am not aware of uh, who said. What should you Absolutely, sir. Sir, I believe that India with its uh, long coastline of over 7500 kilometers creates, uh, so this long coastline creates a certain vulnerability to the subcontinent and sir, there are many historical examples, so both positive and negative. For instance, sir, we see the Chola dynasty with uh, its mighty navy, it not only uh, made its empire prosperous and large, but also enlarged to other parts of the Indian Ocean such as Southeast Asia and Sri Lanka. Uh, on the flip side, sir, we see that at the heyday of the British Navy in the 1600s and 1700s, they not only eliminated all the competition but were also able to primarily dominate India in a lot of senses and these were the routes that were used initially to build. How do you see it in contemporary India? So currently sir, we see that there is a renewed focus on what we call the Indian Ocean region sir and so this focus is driven by two large forces sir, one being China and the second being the United States of America. So China has showed, shown intrigue, increased interest in the Indian Ocean region starting from the South China Sea, sir. What about India? So for India, sir, we are seeing, uh, so we are seeing a lot of diplomatic channels being opened up with countries such as uh, Mauritius and Maldives, sir. Additionally, sir, we also have a lot of strategic ports that we have made, sir. For instance, uh, we have a strategic container deal with Sri Lanka in the works. Mm -hmm. So we have the Chabahar port near Iran. And additionally, sir, we also have a transshipment agreement with Bangladesh with one of their ports, sir. Chabahar is complete. Is it operational? Sir, as far as I am aware, it's not operational so far, sir. So, it is out of picture so far, sir. But it will come in picture. Some, uh, some development in great, great Nicobar? Indeed, sir. Yeah. Sir, the government is planning on making a large multimodal transshipment platform on Great Nicobar. So this will, uh, so along with this, sir, there will also be a large housing project that is to come up over there and the government plans to uh, so market this as a future tourist destination as well. What is multimodal part in it? Sir, I believe that the multimodal part relates to the fact that not only, uh, so this can be used as a transshipment hub for refueling and for also ensuring that imports and exports can be made from this area, sir. Can it help? in uh, containing China some way and if yes, what is the condition for it? Sir, I believe that it is uh, one of, so given its strategic significance both with respect to geography and scope, sir, I believe it is one of the countermeasures that is being implemented uh, in light of what China plans to do in the Indian Ocean. And sir, I believe the strategic significance of the Great Nicobar project relates to the idea of how close is it, it is to the Malacca Strait, uh, which is primarily one of the key choke points for access of uh, oil to China, sir. Can China can be restrained from using Malacca uh, gateway by some uh, manipulations in Great uh, Nicobar? Sir, I believe that if, if in the future we see Great Nicobar being as the primary refueling hub, um, then sir, perhaps it can delay, sir, but I uh, don't see a situation where we will be able to stop it, sir, unless there is military interest. You know, there is a Rear Admiral Raja Menon. He uh, recommends that India should develop it in uh, collaboration with Indian Air Force. Indian Air Force and Navy put together 
can hold some of the ships, Chinese ships, as um, they can hold them back there, so that uh, there is a pressure on China. What is the deep uh, China state? And what is the deep, uh, any state? What is the deep state? So the idea of the deep state relates to the uh, fact that apart from the democratically elected government, so there are other powers at play that influence uh, politics, policies, law, governance. That means there cannot be any deep uh, state of a democratic country. Uh, sir, even in democratic countries, sir, we see that there are, um, sir, for instance, the US has often said that in countries like the US, the military industrial complex. The so democracy has nothing to do with it, I suppose. Perhaps not, sir. What is the dimension of deep Chinese activities, deep state activities? Sir, I believe that in the, in the case of China, sir, uh, the deep state primarily relates to the ideas of the Communist Party of China. And so given that they are the party in power and they are running the show and there is no opposition. What is the dimension? How many people work for promoting ch communism from the Chinese side? Okay, thank you. Uh, your home state is Delhi. Tell me three most important issues Delhi is facing. So the first and foremost would be that of air pollution. So the second would be that of waste management. And so the third would be that of overall urban planning and ensuring that um, so the population increase in Delhi is somewhat mitigated in the future given the increased burden on a lot of uh, on the houses, on water, on electricity, on everything. Sir. What would you advise? Uh, so for all three, sir. All all three. Sir, for air pollution, sir, I believe that there has to be a two-pronged approach. So one would be preventive and one would be curative. So preventing increased air pollution by ensuring that there are norms on construction activities, by ensuring that um, a lot of the diesel vehicles older than 15 years or 10 years, increasing EVs, etc. can be done. So on the curative... This all is already there. What is graded response? So the graded response action plan relates to the idea that based on the AQI, we have a graded response. The higher the AQI, the more severe the measures to combat air pollution. Okay. What else? Sir, apart from that, sir, uh, sir, ensuring that the parali burning in neighboring states is somewhat reduced. So, using technologies such as smog towers, sir, the new spray technologies that have come out is certainly something that can be done to at least uh, in a short term reduce the air pollution in a particular area, sir. Don't think the crime control should be there in amongst three first three important issues, especially the against women, crime against women. And sir, so safety is also a very um, significant part of so Delhi is the. So how would you take care of women's safety in Delhi? Sir, I believe that the idea of safety um, can be tackled by a three-pronged approach, sir. So the first would be ensuring that the uh, so that there is awareness and sensitization among the men. So as it is seen that. Uh, more than 50% of the crimes against women happen within the household. And so these are perhaps something that are difficult to stop, sir. So sensitization among men, which is perhaps a long-term um, goal, is something that needs to be focused on. So second, empowering women is something that has shown to work very effectively. For instance, sir, within the, only in the last year, we have seen that awareness, uh, awareness with regard to use of the 112 number, sir, awareness with regard to usage of pepper spray, has really increased and reduced the number of cases against women. And so third would be with respect to infrastructure and policing. So ensuring that there are more number of street lights, so there are more number of PCR on routes where there are more instances of harassment, etc. And uh, so these are the three approaches. That what are the causes of aging, early aging I would say, not aging? So the primary cause at a genetic level is loss of information, sir. So that is that our DNA has all the information to function absolutely effectively for as long as we want. However, the access to this information is with age, sir, because of oxidation, because of DNA damage, etc., goes down. And so this is exacerbated by other determinants such as pollution, such as habits, such as smoking and drinking, uh, etc., sir. Is there any role of diseases in early aging? Indeed, sir. What are the diseases which cause early aging? Uh, sir, a lot of the diseases are downstream of aging. For instance, uh, cardiovascular issues, diabetes issues, etc. are downstream. Sir, upstream would be all communicable diseases or viral, bacterial, fungal diseases. 
they reduce the efficiency of the body to clean itself to protect its DNA because it is busy fighting. Tell me three important measures for delayed aging, to delay the aging. So at a personal level or uh, at a so social level? Personal can be replicated, so tell me at the personal level. Uh, sir, I believe the three pillars of ensuring healthy aging are one, sir, habits and behaviours. Sir, this would include things like, sir, sleeping on time, ensuring that there is adequate exercise. Sir, second, something that is often looked down upon, sir, uh, but I believe that is the future, is supplementation, sir. Sir, ensuring that a lot of the vitamins, a lot of the uh, minerals, etc. That, that, that we need are often not there in our body. What is the role of alcohol in aging? Sir, alcohol has seemed to be uh, a primary driver of aging because sir, it primarily affects the liver and so the liver detoxifies the body and so because of al when there is increased alcohol it converts to acetaldehyde in the body in the liver and this is essentially a poison for the body. So this detoxification process takes so long that other processes in the body stall. So this leads to DNA damage, this leads to oxidative stresses. Alcohol, whether it is a depressant or an stimulant? Sir, I believe that even though it is popularly uh, thought to be a stimulant, Chemically, biochemically, it's a depressant, sir. So now how does it cause stimulation? Uh, sir, I believe that... If it is depressant, how does it cause stimulation? Sir, I believe that it is a depressant because it uh, depresses certain neurotransmitters such as uh, dopamine, etc. However, sir, it increases sir, either serotonin or some other neurotransmitter, which is why it has stimulant-like um, attributes, but it is biochemically a depressant. Sir. What is great wall of steel? Uh, sir, I'm not aware of uh, the great wall. You haven't heard this word? You know the Chinese president, he always talks about this. Of the All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Anirudh, you know the government had recently banned the Popular Front of India, right? So what were the reasons uh, for which this was necessary? Uh, so the reasons behind banning the Popular Front of India were that it was deemed to be a terrorist organization because they were ostensibly planning an attack, uh, a terrorist attack within India, sir. And right. so a lot of the papers and the linkages found were Linkages with what? They, they had linkages with certain international terror groups also, right? Indeed. Sir. Which one of these was predominantly mentioned as one of the reasons for banning? ISIS? Their, their cadres were also in touch with the ISIS. So what is the ISIS? Uh, so the ISIS or the Islamic State, um, so was initially ISIL and sir, so they envisage an area in the Middle East where Islamic law will uh, so rule. And so they propose a very radical idea of Islamism in their proposed... So they were based in Syria and Iraq. Yes, but why were they posing a threat to India? And how were they posing a threat to India? How were they able to radicalize our youth? Sir, I believe that uh, the operations of ISIS also seek to uh, mobilize a lot of the Islamic population in other countries. And sir, an example was uh, of this was, I think, seen in Sri Lanka, sir where terrorist, the terrorist attack of 2019 was linked to ISIS. And sir, I believe it is one of their objectives to increase radicalization in other countries and advance the idea of uh, what they So do. how are they doing it? That's what I'm asking you. So far as India is concerned, we have a large number of people who have been arrested over the last several years, almost 300. So uh, how were they able to radicalize them? So I believe it is primarily uh, by, through digital means, through the internet. Because a lot of individuals who go on uh, certain websites, etc., and come in contact with individuals from ISIS. Right. So basically, it's through uh, online radicalization, right? Now, so far as the ISIS is concerned, it is almost non existent now in Syria and Iraq. Part of the group has now moved to Afghanistan. And we have another group now called the ISKP Islamic State Khurasan Province. And that is now, they, they owe allegiance to the ISIS. So. And similarly, they are doing the same thing to India now. And therefore, many of the people who are members of the uh, uh, Popular Front of India were found to be in touch and being influenced by the ISKP, which is much more nearer to us and also a, uh, a cause of concern for the country, right? Thank you, sir. I was not aware of now tell me, uh, you know the Nord Stream pipeline was in the news recently, why was that? Sir, the Nord Stream pipeline uh, is a pipeline through Russia to through the Baltic Sea to provide gas to Europe. So this was in the news because uh, sir, there was ostensibly a sabotage in the Nord Stream 
and sir to make it dysfunctional sir yeah but who was responsible you 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 read about seymour hersh as uh, i'm not sure sir seymour hersh was an american uh, reporter who has laid the blame on the, on the us as because their force is involved okay now tell me the pakistan prime minister has been saying that we want to establish good relations with india normalize the relations with india provided we withdraw 370 uh, which we have implemented and also implementation of the un security council resolutions so so what is the stumbling block in implementation of the un security council resolutions uh, so these resolutions are with respect to sir 48 1948 uh, indo pakistan we went to the united nations security council when the pakistanis were moving into jnk and the un had established a committee and they are called the un that has been the uh, that has been the basic demand of all when we had the separatists the huriyat in kashmir what did they say that the will, the will of the people should be ascertained and resolutions un security council resolutions to be implemented so what are these resolutions sir i'm not exactly aware of what the resolutions are sir why was pakistan placed in the gray list sir a lot of uh, links were found between a lot of individuals who were in pakistan with a lot of the money laundering uh so which was done for terrorist activities etc was found and a lot of so a lot of individuals their bank accounts were highlighted by the fatf and so because these bank accounts were not frozen or act, or enough action was not taken by pakistan they continued to be on the green list so we end your mock interview wish you all the very best wish you all Good the right. best sir Good. take care don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update